Welcome to Kalusugan ay Karapatan. I am Dr. Menchik Padilla, your host for today. This is part of a series of episodes on COVID-19. COVID-19 was first detected in Wuhan, China in December 2019. In March 11, 2020, the WHO has declared this novel coronavirus outbreak a global pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected almost every country around the world. As of May 2020, this disease has infected over 3.5 million people with more than 250,000 deaths worldwide. In the Philippines, the number of COVID-19 cases is almost 10,000, with deaths over 630. Lockdowns and other strict measures were put in place to protect the people and to minimize transmission of the virus. With these measures being relaxed and lifted in many areas, people should be educated, engaged, and empowered to adjust to the new norm in order to protect themselves and their families from this disease. In this episode, we have Dr. Regina Berba, Associate Professor of the UT College of Medicine and Chair of the Hospital Infection Control Unit of the Philippine General Hospital. We are going to discuss how we can protect ourselves from COVID-19. Good day, Dr. Nina. Hello, Hello ma'am. Hello, Chancellor. Um, I'm um, very pleased to be here today. Well, well, thank you for accepting our invitation, uh, Dr. Nina. Uh, you have been part of uh, the care of patients with COVID-19 at the Philippine General Hospital. And at the same time, we actually turn to you if you want to protect ourselves, the health workers, from COVID-19. So it's but uh, we have the best person actually in our midst right now because she is the go-to person as far as COVID-19 and protection of oneself. But we go, before we go to the topic of protecting oneself, can we just have a, uh, a very brief um, um, background on COVID-19? Although we had a first episode, we'd like to share some information with our viewers who are coming in only for the first time. So... Uh... As you said, um, the the etiologic agent or the virus that's causing this very contagious uh, illness is called the SARS-CoV-2. Uh, this was first uh, described in Wuhan, China, uh, during the early parts of December. But later on, we learned about it in the f- first days of January. And soon the virus, the viral infection started to spread in many countries until the outbreak was uh, declared by the WHO in February. And later on, this was stepped up to a call for a pandemic, which started to um, gain a lot of aggressive measures from all countries. So what's very striking about uh, the COVID-19 is that it's a very... It's a highly contagious illness, and the mode of transmission is mainly human to human. And I think we can discuss that a little bit more. Thank you, Dr. Dina. Our topic today really is protecting oneself. Uh, in the past couple of months, um, actually the, la- the past few months and many weeks, the main concern of an ordinary person is how we can protect ourselves, oneself, from the virus. So can we can we now talk a little about um, how we can start protecting oneself, Dr. Nina? So uh, we need to first understand how this virus is transmitted, possibly transmitted from one person to the next. So it starts off with an infected individual who will start maybe talking, maybe coughing, maybe sneezing, laughing, singing, and uh, it is it. It's these uh, activities that will lead to the spread of what we call infectious droplets. So you could see, sometimes you could see this, there are uh, visible droplets that come out of the mouth of the, the person. And these droplets are the ones that are highly infectious. So a person who's about maybe three feet, within three feet of distance, may possibly inhale this, or maybe these droplets will uh, end up 
in one of the mucous membranes and cause an infection. Or perhaps some of the droplets will fall into surfaces and the hands of unsuspecting people around him will touch these surfaces and then later on the hands, the contaminated hands, will get into their nose, their eyes, or their mouths, uh, leading to transmission of the infection. Dr. Nina, I found something very interesting in your statement. No? You said that uh, uh, even singing, Pilipino, mahilig kumanta, no? So it's not just about, it's not just about um, uh, sneezing or coughing. So any any other action that can actually transmit the droplet is going to be important. Eh, alam mo naman natin mga Pilipino, mahilig kumanta. So yun din pala, eh, dapat natin iwasan. Am I correct, Dr. Nina? Correct. Kahit nga nagsasalita ko, yung normal speaking, of course, the more the the effort is, kunyari nga, pag kumakan ka, pag very vigorous yung coughing, mas, mas we think nag-expel siya ng more droplets. Tsaka meron yung force that uh, leads to uh, the movement of the droplets farther on. So mas, mas parang mas malaking distance, mas malaking area na pwede maging infectious in a way. So let, let's start at home. No? Um, we have, uh, especially during the ECQ, we probably have uh, the great majority of our uh, viewers at home. How do we start protecting ourselves at home? Dr. Nina. Okay. So, yung panay na natin to naririnig na rin sa radio at sa TV. And I really like to stress na these are very important. So kung isipin natin, paano nga ba na-infect? So it's really being within three feet. They say sometimes six feet. Uh, malayo na yung six feet, that's two meters away. Pero definitely within three feet, uh, pagka nandun ka sa parang firing range ng droplets ng uh, possibly infectious person, then you could also get infected. So that's the principle behind what we call social distancing or physical distancing. We'd like to be away from the yung, uh, circumference now, then, diba? three feet circumference away. Kung pwedeng six feet circumference is even better. But three feet should be fairly safe. So uh, one of the dictum of the ECQ is to maintain that physical distance between persons. And we can start that at home. Kunyari, hindi mo alam kung saan galing si mommy or si daddy or some other people like maybe kasambahay natin, lumabas yan. Pwede for the meantime, we maintain that kind of distance. And then the next one, so physical distancing is one. The next major principle or strategy is uh, hand hygiene. So hand hygiene means using either sa bahay natin, madaling-madaling kumunta sa sink para magpugas ng kamay. So let's use that soap and water. Pagka lumabas tayo ng bahay, pwede rin tayong meron small bottle of alcohol. Both of these are, uh, the intention is to disinfect the hands. That means mapapatay natin yung virus very effectively and efficiently by just doing this, either one of these hand hygiene strategies. And of course, the next one is uh, using the face mask. Diba? Kasi, kunyari, uh, both ways yun eh. More kung ikaw meron kang konting sniffles, meron kang konting sipon, maybe ugo, maybe sore throat, then putting a mask on will effectively stop the transmission from you to other people. And opposite, on the other side of it is, kung may mga people around you, tapos hindi mo naman control. Kunyari, meron kang bisita tapos nag-uubo siya, gusto mo na siya paalisin but you're very politely trying to be you know, uh, courteous. But the, you wearing a mask and him wearing a mask will also cut down the risk of transmission. So yun po yung three main ways, even at home, that we can reduce transmissibility. Um, number one, maintaining physical distancing. Number two, hand hygiene. Number three, wearing a mask. At number four, yung environmental cleaning. So that means maintaining our surroundings very clean. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nina, you mentioned hand washing, no? And um, 
paano ba tayo katagal dapat maghugas ng kamay no uh, can you guide our viewers on how what is the best way to to do uh, hand washing well alam nyo one good thing about the pandemic kasi ano eh infection con- ako yung in charge mo ng infection control teaching the students and the healthcare workers in PGH for the longest time this is really one of the most difficult tasks to make people wash their hands. Pero ngayon, parang magically lahat nagbugas ng kamay. No? So, the right way to do it is to really spend time uh, in front of the sink with the water running, uh, wet your hands, and then pour some, pour some liquid soap or the bar of the soap and make a lather so that there's enough lather covering all the surfaces of your hands. Mga 20 seconds yun eh. Um, you can sing a song or just uh, usually by the time ma-finish mo mag-form ng lather at mag-rinse ng uh, hands together and wash off all the soap, that's about 20 seconds already. So that's sufficient. Okay. Yun, pwedeng gawin yun. Or yun nga yung use of alcohol using the same motions. No? Uh, we teach the students and of course mothers, uh, people in the community uh, to just look at their hands and make sure that the soap or the alcohol covers all the surfaces of the hands. Parang, parang pwede ba yan sabihin, Chancy? Um, palm to palm, dorsum over the palms, and then fingers interlace and tao ganyan. Yes. Tapos yung thumbs, tapos yung tips of the finger. Yan. Yan po yung mga different parts of the hands that need to be uh, first washed with water and then debrided with the uh, soap or alcohol. So, so Dr. Nina, can you tell us the, the right way to do the hand washing? Uh, ang, ang sinasabi natin, if you sing... Happy birthday two times. Sabi nila, nakaabot tayo ng tamang oras para sa paghugas ng kamay. Pero what is the right way of washing your hands? So, um, usually I tell the students, no, or when we're in the community, the mothers, the barangay health workers, you just look at your hands, uh, stay in front of the faucet, and then let the water run over your hands. Tapos, uh, put either liquid soap or use the bar of the bar soap. And then, palm to palm. Usually, mga five times yan. Tapos, dorsum over the palm, both sides. And then, fingers interlace five times again. Tapos, uh, yung back of the uh, fingers, no? So, you rub them five times. And then, the thumb, very important, five times also. And then probably the most important, especially for healthcare workers, yung fingertips. Yeah, so five times, five rounds, minsan yung iba ganyan, and then the other one. And then by then, usually kung alcohol ginagamit mo, medyo tuyo na yun eh. Or kung uh, tapos na yung, usually may lather na yung hands mo, magrami ng lather, then you uh, rinse them over the flowing water. By then, mga more than 20 seconds na yan. And that should be sufficient. Usually, hindi ka na kailangan mag-sing ng happy birthday song twice. Usually, once lang ay okay na. Ah, okay. Okay. So, dapat talaga magkaroon tayo ng certain habit, no? That if you can, if you, whether it's counting, whether it's singing, pero dapat talaga, mabuo mo talaga, sabi mo ngayon, about 20 seconds of washing. And we will do this at home. And that is your advice, Dr. Nina, for everybody who's viewing us right now. This is the way to correctly wash our hands. Yes, this is the correct way of uh, washing our hands. And, uh, there are two par- parts of uh, good hand hygiene. It's one, the technique, and number two, when to do it. So okay. uh, uh, at home, alam naman natin na, syempre, di ba tinuturaan tayo ng parents natin panay before you uh, eat? Yun, yung definite yun. Pero the other parts are before you uh, prepare food, after using the toilet, and before, in general, ngayon, Every time you feel like when your hands are contaminated, you touch something, then the way to go is to really frequently wash your hands. Uh, in COVID, gusto mo to gawin panay kasi 
pwedeng nag-contaminate yung hands mo. With, kanina nga, what we said, infectious droplets that you might have touched in some places, whether in your home or outside your home, and you'd want to get rid of all those viruses. So the way to do it, efficiently, good way to do it is to do good hand washing. Okay, so napaka-simple. No, no, that's free and uh, must be done by everybody else. Uh, I'm just lang na susukan lang yun. What about the the mothers handling the babies? No, kasi ang pag-inisip mo yan, ano, they're always taking care of the the babies handling them. Is it exactly the same or may additional measures pa tayong dapat ibigay sa mother sa pag-aalaga nila? Kasi ang ang baby connected sa mother, lalo, lagi niyang kasama. Eh. Are there any extra measures that a mother should do because she's taking care of a baby? Oo. Yung mommies, lalo na, di ba? Kasi parang lahat ng hawakan niya, kailangan malinis before matouch nga niya yung baby. So everything, maybe more frequently than all other people in the home, uh, the mother should be more vigilant about doing the hand washing. Yes. So especially preparing uh, baby food or let's say preparing herself to breastfeed, lahat yan. Uh, taking care that there's no contamination, di ba? Sa, sa mothers, sila rin kasi yung nag-change ng diaper. Tapos next activity niya, it will be feeding the baby. Dapat in between, like, uh, good hand washing siya doon. Okay. You mentioned earlier that um, if you have, we have patients, we have parents who are working and then they come home. And then of course, uh, how will you, what will be the routine that we should do now for parents coming home uh, uh, to their homes? Okay, pa, paano ba magiging ritual nila ngayon pagdating sa bahay? Um, yung parents, uh, believe it or not, actually meron pa lang occupational scoring, risk scoring for COVID. No? That the, uh, a network, an occupational group in the United States put together trying to assess kung gano'ng ka-risky ka ba bilang nagtatrabaho na magka-COVID. And um, they uh, base this on the amount of contact you have with potential clients or kunyari mga doctor, potential patients. Tapos how close you are with these people and the number of hours that you spend doing this activity. So, uh, may mga occupations pala na talaga ang taas ng scores nila. So, ang pinakamataas were the uh, dentists. Uh, everything related to doing dental hygiene. Tapos, the respiratory therapist. Tapos, dun sa scores na yon mataas rin yung mga doktor, no? At saka mga nurses. These are all individuals giving close care to their patients. So, Pag ganun, parang suskoran mo siya ng high risk. Kung ikaw si mommy at si daddy coming home, you really have to be careful. Not that the people who score lower will not be careful. Everybody needs to be careful in this time. Uh, pero parang the degree of being parang almost obsessive compulsive ka about keeping clean everything uh, needs to be there. So uh, parents who would be working uh, now or later post the ECQ, really need to think through the entire process of coming home. So, dapat uh, as much as possible, lahat ng possibly contaminated sa katawan mo, hindi mo na to papasok sa bahay mo. Alam niyo po ba na yung dun sa mga studies na uh, looked into where the virus would go dun sa mga areas where patients were, ang pinakamataas na scores were the floors. No? Yung mga floor pala, pag swinab mo, nakita nila mataas talaga yung concentration of the viruses there. So, ibig sabihin, hindi naman sa tinatouch naman natin yung floors, as nililinis naman siya ng mga janitors, di ba? Pero, it just means that maybe uh, this time of the year, during this COVID pandemic, iwan talaga natin yung ating mga shoes outside the home. Huwag na natin siya ipasok sa home. Lalo na if we have babies na crawling, our little children playing on the floor. Talagang careful tayo about that. And then our clothes, these are potentially dirty talaga. So before we even say, hello guys, I'm home, baka dapat punta ka muna sa, sa bathroom. Have a full bath 
Like, uh, ako nga, parang araw-araw, I never used to shampoo every day, eh, di ba? Hindi ganyan tinuturo sa atin normally. Pero ngayon talaga, parang shampoo lahat, uh, clean everything, even the back of your ears, everything talaga. Change clothes, um, have a separate pile for the clothes that are perhaps contaminated, uh, separate from the others. Yun. Yun yung usually uh, ritual na gagawin dapat na mga people coming home whose scores, occupational scores, are higher than others. Well, thank you, Dr. Nina. That's really interesting to know because uh, uh, there is, because of this fear of, you know, contracting COVID-19, parang lahat kinatatakutan na but you're saying that meron kang high risk at may low risk. The important thing is that you know how to clean yourself uh, when you get home before you start um Make, uh, mingling with other members of the family. And sabi nga eh, no kissing and no hugging at this time, no? Uh, the most difficult part for grandparents. So which brings me now to the senior citizens, no? So how, how can senior citizens protect themselves? So the, the, the experience from China and most other countries and even here in the Philippines really show na yung... Uh, age is an independent risk factor for bad complications of the COVID-19. So as much as possible, talaga dapat wag sila magkaroon ng infection. So um, among everybody siguro in the home, they're the ones who really like to stay home. Yun. Sometimes our, I feel, uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I feel na parang even if some of our lolas and lolos feel strong pa sila, parang siguro stay home pa talaga muna at this time. Kasi you never know. Even if they feel they're not the usual 60 years old, I think um, stay home. <laughs> stay home ang, ang bottom line for our beloved uh, older people in the home. Tapos, uh, uh, we really try to... Um, encourage them to do the usual things that we do to try to protect ourselves also. So parang mas greater yung protection natin sa kanila. Parang sinabi mo talaga na, you should stay home, no? You will have, you will have more, they'll do more harm when you, you go out and help your family members do the errands. This is the time we're in. Staying home will probably help your family better. So one of those rare times. Okay, so we've been, there uh, are issues about the home before we get out of the house because uh, uh, I'd like to discuss also how we will protect ourselves when we get out of the house. Are we still, there are some things that we want to house, just protecting inside the house? Yung ano lang, siguro mention natin yung uh, two things siguro that I'd like to stress. Um, yung tungkol sa keeping the places clean, pay, uh, you know, things that are frequently held at mm-hmm. home. So mostly yan, doorknobs, yung mga uh, buttons ng light, electric fans, yan. Parang linisya natin. Ah, I wanted to, it was in my mind kanina when I was talking na yung cell phone natin, parang gusto ko yan talaga gusto bago ko umuwi. One of the things I try. Minsan nga, feeling ko nasisira na yung phone ko, kaka-spray ko ng alcohol sa, sa screen ng phone. But you know, it's one of the, probably the most contaminated objects we carry from our offices or our hospitals into the home. So, you know, pagpasok niyan sa bahay, na, na disinfect mo na siya. Some people use plastic, diba? Nagpa-plastic wrap sila or they put it in a ziplock. Those are good things to do, I think, uh, to keep the uh, phone parang clean by the time you get them. So para sinasabi ng anything that's frequently used, frequently touched, must have special attention for cleaning. Okay? And alcohol will be fine. Yes. Alcohol, alcohol be fine. Okay. So, of course, you know, um, especially for those who go out of the house, they have to go to work. We have to start, we have to ask the question of how do we protect ourselves when we go to work? Uh, well, of course, even if let's say there's no transportation, but we have a lot of people still going out, how do we protect ourselves aside from physical distancing? How do we protect ourselves when we get to a, uh, to a bus or a jeepney? 
pa, paano ba ang gagawin natin protection this time? Kasi reality yun eh. No. O nga. Actually, mahirap isipin siya eh. At saka, until it probably happens, we're not really sure how it will happen. So, sabi nila, di ba, may physical distancing. But uh, at the height of... Uh, it's hard to imagine that it will really, really, really happen. And it, I'm sure on the first few days of, you know, getting the ECQ lifted, uh, there will be some major commotion and confusion on how exactly it will happen. Pero, uh, yun, um, I think people also want to cooperate and will probably want to sit away from others. Basta lang parang may sistema by the time we uh, do this. So there must be some person who will show people, guide them na o oh, ito. I think they started to put X marks, no? So parang nakaka-help yun eh. Sa mga elevators, saan ka ba tatayo? Sa mga groceries, saan ka ba tatayo? So I guess pag uh, nag-open yung things like the LRT or the buses, the jeepneys, if they will be available for commuting, uh, magkakaroon ng ganong klaseng guide to help us. So, aside from sitting farther away from each other, yung holding rin, kasi, di ba, parang feel mo, parang ang dami-daming high-touch parts, yung motion of uh, transportation. So, yun din. Um, minsan iniisip ko, minsan kasi I see people uh, wearing gloves, no? Wearing gloves. Parang a suggestion ko siguro yung bis na we pour our money on gloves. Kasi nakakontaminate din siya eh. Tapos I'm sure kung maduminan, maghihinayang ka itapon siya ng itapon. So ang mangyayari, suot mo yung gloves buong day. Tapos madumi din siya and it causes, actually it harbors more, uh, not only the virus but a lot of bacteria. And it's harder to clean gloves actually than just our bare hands. So kung if I had, you know, an uh, X number of pesos, I probably will just invest on alcohol and just frequent alcohol use when I'm um, I'm outside the home. So hindi po ako siguro gagamit ng gloves. Even if I feel madumi yung pera na hinahawa ko ko, madumi yung jeepney na tatangan ako to, I'll probably just keep a bottle of alcohol and use it frequently. Okay, so mga viewers natin na gumagamit ng gloves kasi ang dami ko nakikita sa supermarket eh, yun ang naka-gloves ka sila kapag sila ay nagsya-shopping. Okay. Um, when we were discussing this episode, we were talking about a lot of myths and I'd like you to discuss um, the, the myths, the most common myths as we are caring for ourselves during the, the pandemic state. Uh-oh. So isa sa mga parang frequently kung naririnig na uh, myth no is uh, uh, that certain things that we eat or drink or consume probably will help reduce our risk for uh, getting the coronavirus. So sabi ng WHO and many other studies na so far walang ganon. So uh, minsan di ba ang dami na nating vitamins na nabili, ang dami na nating iniinom. May mga kaibigan ako sumasakit na yun siya nila kakainom ng maraming vitamin C. But so far, I'm sure if we take just one tablet a day, it won't harm us. But it probably still won't prevent the virus from happening, viral infection from happening if it will happen to us. Um, there are people also who drink um, lemon juice, yan yung mga sinasabi, uh, le- a lot of lemon juice or garlic or pepper, yan yung mga ganong klaseng foods have not been shown to, myth sila, have not been shown to work. There's some articles I've read about gargling, diba? gargling different uh, substances supposedly to reduce the risk of uh, the virus lodging into our throat, but unfortunately, none of this have been shown to really work. So, parang the bottom line is so far, walang good uh, methods or drinks or foods or medicines that have been shown to um, prevent the COVID infection. Even yung mga gamot, ha, 
Uh, yun, parang yung mga ganun, parang sige, try mo, probably won't hurt you. So, if you drink vitamin C, okay lang. Basta alam mo na you're taking it uh, because maybe you're not eating well enough, you'd like to have some supplements. Pero yung taking some things that might harm you, yun yung try natin iwasan. So, there are people who buy hydrochloroquine, ah, uh, believing that taking them will maybe reduce the risk of getting COVID. So, I urge the public not to do that until we really know that hydrochloroquine will work. Siguro don't use it as quote-unquote prophylaxis. Yeah. Okay, so Dr. Nina, I mean, uh, I think, you know, from uh, one thing is clear from what you've shared is that very simple measures of hand washing and, uh, and caring for one's health are enough to really protect oneself from, from COVID-19. Um, in the last few minutes of our episode, I'd like you to give your, your message. You know, uh, If you were to give three messages to the general public uh, and with a focus also to mothers and senior citizens, what will it be? Um, I'd like the everybody to know that um, to have to believe that this is a very highly contagious viral infection. And uh, the way to just try to protect ourselves from getting this viral infection is uh, parang, in, for me, parang clear kung we understand na let's try to do the physical distancing kasi you'd like to be, as we said, farther away from potential people who might have it. So three feet is good. Six feet is probably better. So that's one, social distancing. Number two, as we said, hand hygiene, hindi siya mahirap gawin. Daming faucets around us. At kung walang faucet, maybe alcohol, a little bottle in our bag will probably save us. Using the mask, no? Um, kung... Kung wala na masyadong surgical mask, maybe cloth mask should suffice for most people in their homes and in the communities. And number four, keeping things clean. So in other words, really a lot of uh, hygienic, good hygienic practices that we, we should believe in will work for this COVID-19 pandemic protection. Oh, thank you, Dr. Nina. Thank you for helping us um, protect ourselves from COVID-19 by using very simple measures. Thank you and we hope to see you again in another episode. Maraming salamat sa'yo. Thank you very much. Paul. Taking some simple precautions can actually reduce our chances of being infected or spreading COVID-19. Keep up to date on the latest information from trusted resources, such as the WHO or your local and national health authorities. In doing so, we protect ourselves as well as our loved ones. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. This is Kalusugan ay Karapatan. Music